Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I am Millicent Walker. On the program today, bring back our girls' campaigners, march the streets of Lagos, marking three years since the abduction of over 200 Chibok schoolgirls. Local government employees continue quests for financial and administrative autonomy. And the Emo State Governor, Rochas Okrocha, asks youth to embrace agriculture as alternative to oil and white collar jobs. Once again with the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, he has arrived Yola on an official visit to Adamo Estate. He was accompanied on the trip by the Secretary to the Federal Government, Baba Chilawo, the FTT Minister, Mohamed Musa, Senator Bin Tagarba, and several other dignitaries. The Vice President was received at the airport by the Adamo Estate Governor, Mohamed Jibrila, and his entire Executive Council members. His first point of call is the Palace of Lamido of Adamoa, Mohamed Barkindo Mustafa, where he was received by all eight traditional rulers in the state. The Vice President is expected to inspect some of the state government's ongoing projects. And it's been three years now since the Bring Back Our Girls group have been mounting a passionate appeal for the release of the remaining girls in captivity. Today, members of the group throng the Alausa area of the Lagos State Secretariat towards the government office in a peaceful protest to increase awareness in the fight for the release of the remaining 195 missing Chibok schoolgirls. Members of the Bring Back Our Girls group continued with their campaign for the release of the remaining missing 195 Chibo girls. The Ikeja shopping mall is the point of departure as they march along with chants of redemption songs towards the governor's office with the campaign slogan, Three Years is Too Long. On getting closer to the rallying point, the group is intercepted with barricades by security operatives. Apart from the release of the remaining Chibok girls, the group is also demanding for security of lives in general and school children in particular. We want safety in our schools, but we want government to be responsible and accountable for every Nigerian child. But, and that includes not just in the northern part of the country, across the whole country. So we need results. We need to see the girls. Three years is too long. The protesters feel disappointed as the governor fails to show up after an agreed 9 a.m. appointment. But they would not relent until they get a response from the Lagos state government. We had sent a letter earlier and the letter was acknowledged. It wasn't long before the Commissioner for Special Duties gets to the scene. He affirms that the Lagos state government stands with a Bring Back Our Girls campaign in fighting for the release of the remaining missing Chibok girls. The federal government, especially under President Buhari has not sat back and been different to the plight of these girls. But it wouldn't make much sense until we rescue the very last girl. The question now is, how much longer will the innocent girls remain in captivity? Clearly, nothing more will be cheerful to this group and indeed all Nigerians than for the remaining girls to be rescued alive and eventually reunited with their families. And there was mild drama today at the office of the Lagos State Electoral Commission, LASEC, as the commission briefed stakeholders uh, on the June local council elections. Two factional chairmen of the Lagos PDP showed up at the office, Shegno Lawale of the Senator Ali Modu Sheriff Group and Moshud Salvador of the Senator Ahmed Markafi Group. Both men were willing to speak on behalf of the party, but the commission has not decided which of the factions to recognize in relation to the forthcoming polls. The Commission has announced guidelines for the polls as well as fees to be paid for candidates' form, which most of the parties say is too high for the elections. 
The parties have also asked the state electoral oh, yeah. umpire to use the card reader used in 2015 general elections to prevent rigging. The LASEC chairman says the card readers will not be used for council polls, insisting it's not in the law but may be considered in future polls. And laboratory tests on eight suspected cases of meningitis in Oyo State, southwest Nigeria, have come out negative, ending speculations that there is an outbreak in the state. The state's Commissioner for Health, Dr. Aziz Adedutan, told Channels Television after a press conference that all eight suspected cases have been examined and found to be negative to the stereotype C meningitis that is ravaging some states in the country. The Commissioner explained that due diligence has been done in eight reported cases from people who just returned from some parts of the north and settled in Monia Akinyele, local government area of the state, as well as Oni Memorial Hospital also in Ibado. He also notes that intense awareness campaigns have uh, started in Hausa communities in the state to notify the nearest health facilities in their areas if any person uh, appears symptomatic of meningitis. And with the recent cases of waterborne diseases and the need to ensure public compliance to safety and eradication of health hazards uh, emanating from unsafe water, the Delta State Government has flagged off a water testing, sanitization and investigation exercise. The Commission for Water Resources Development, Fidelis Tiliji, well, who kicked off the campaign in the suburb of the state capital, says water testing and certification is mandatory according to the provisions of the state urban water board law of the year 2000. Over 60% of deltans depend on groundwater, boreholes, which in many cases may not be safe for domestic industrial use. Experts are of the opinion that contrary to the belief that groundwater is a safe choice for consumption, it in most cases may be heavily polluted with microbial water-bound contaminants such as Salmonella typhi, amoebiasis, hepatitis B, virus vibrio, cholera, and other microorganisms that can dissolve under favorable conditions in water. That is why the state government has embarked on creating awareness and inspection exercise intended primarily to wage war against waterborne diseases in Delta State. The team begins with a quick tour of the Delta State Quality Control Laboratory. From here, it moves to various business premises to inspect water sources and usage. Where the septic tank is is pretty close, and also the toilet is very close to the borehole and that really con you know that concerns me because uh, you know the septic tank can actually contaminate the aquifer layer and that can seep into the uh, into the water bed in there the state government says it cannot afford to ignore the obvious health implications of unwholesome water consumption by its people and the resultant bills the citizens spend on waterborne diseases my plea to deltans is seize the opportunity of desensitization pay the individual 5,000 naira for one whole year. That 5,000 naira for one whole year will save you a lot in terms of bringing down the health costs of you and your family. A healthy nation, they say, is a wealthy nation. For the Delta state government, to ensure safe water supply, the direction is to have a periodic laboratory water test and data analysis from all sources of water. Of course, the Okoa administration has pledged to remain committed to. When news across Nigeria returns, the governor of Imo State tasks youths on agriculture to join us again.